Hi everyone, you can see I have Dr. Shaw with me. I'm here, I'm back. Yep, today we're gonna talk about one of our favorite skincare ingredients and that is retinoids. But instead of telling you the pros and cons about it, we're gonna talk about the myths around it. So this is gonna be a little true or false with Dr. Shaw. So you've probably experienced this before when you talk about retinoids. I know I have experienced this where you're raving about it and everyone in the comments talks about how much they love it too. And then you see those comments where people say such outlandish things about retinoids that you just want to address it, right? Right. So there are so many myths and misconceptions about retinoids. I don't really know where they start. I'm always curious about where these things begin, but I have right. no clue. But that's what we're going to do today. We're going to debunk all these crazy retinol myths. Mm -hmm. First, do you want to tell everybody if they're unfamiliar with retinoids, what they might be? So retinoids are a family of vitamin A derivatives, and that includes your tretinoin, your retinol, your adapalene. All of these are vitamin A derivatives. And so retinoid is the family and retinol is like the apple or the fruit and then tretinoin is like an orange and they're all sort of the same thing they have the same benefits except they're just like different conversions of each other so retinol needs to be converted to retinaldehyde retinaldehyde needs to be converted to tretinoin or retinoic acid to be active in the skin and so they're all they all have similar benefits um, and they fall within that family right and they just kind of vary as far as the strength and everything too right because of those conversions retinol can kind of be sometimes more aggressive than tretinoin depending depending on the concentration of the retinol. So it's really kind of nuanced and you probably know from like formulating that there's some like nuance, there's more nuance to it than we'd think. But in general, I would say tretinoin is or, or retinoic acid is gonna be more active and stronger than your retinols. All right, so I'm ready to hit you with the first true or false. You ready? Let's go. Okay, so true or false, retinoids thin your skin. This is probably the biggest myth. Like this is the one that I hear the most. Definitely not true. And I think this all started because it, there's multiple layers within the epidermis and that's like our top layer of the skin. And the stratum corneum is the very top of that top. And it does thin that layer out, but that's the layer that causes like dullness and uneven skin texture, but it thickens the rest of the skin. And that's the type of skin we want to be thickened. So overall, if you look at it totally, it actually thickens the skin but thins that stratum corneum, and that's why it makes our skin texture look better. So you're basically saying that the skin that you wanna get rid of anyway, or that's on its way out, is what it's actually thinning. Exactly, exactly. All right, true or false, retinoids work by exfoliating your skin. Exfoliating being the key word here. So, <laughs> so what does exfoliating even really mean, I guess? Because it does speed up your skin cell turnover so that it, like cells that would have taken longer to mature, um, they happen quicker. And that's why it's really important in anti-aging because as we get older, it takes longer for our skin cells to mature. So it is gonna speed up that process. And so you may get flaking, so it may feel like it's exfoliating, but it's not breaking the little bonds between the cells or removing a surface layer of the skin like most exfoliants do. So it's not really an exfoliant, though you may notice flaking with it, if that makes sense. So I'd say that's kind of false. It's kind of like a in the middle, but I do hear people, including dermatologists, say that it exfoliates the skin. And I can see, like you're saying, how it can be very confusing to explain that to anybody, right? Right, it's kind of an in-between one. Yeah. True or false, you can't use retinoids when you're a teenager. Yeah, that's one where I've heard a ton of times people say like, oh, you're too young to use retinol or it's gonna stop working if you start it too soon. But like the first time we actually even started using retinoids was for acne in teenagers. And so it's actually, like I said, they're all sort of derivatives of each other and they have so many different benefits, but it was invented for acne and then became an anti-aging ingredient. And so you may wanna use it as a teenager for acne. You may wanna use it as a young adult for hyperpigmentation and texture. And then you may wanna use it in your late 20s for anti-aging. And so you really can use it at any age as long as you're using it for the right reasons. That's false, yeah, definitely false. True or false, you can't wear retinoids or use retinoids during the day. So this is false. Uh, well, kind of false. Well, let's go back to where it all started. So one, the older formulations of retinoids were not stable in sunlight. So they get deactivated by UV radiation. And so that's where the idea was that you couldn't use them during the daytime. Now newer formulations have come out, they're more stable and you can use them during the daytime and won't get deactivated. In fact, some of them even tell you to use them twice a day. So. Mm -hmm. They are totally okay to use during the day for some of the newer formulations. So the second reason that that rumor exists is because people think that retinoids make you more sensitive to the sun. And this is actually something that I was like actually taught. 
my, like my whole life. And then I found this paper that showed they actually looked at UV radiation affecting the skin and people that were using retinoids and they found that it did not make them more sensitive to the sun. So retinoids probably don't make you more sensitive to the sun and so it really wouldn't affect it. And even if it did make you more sensitive to the sun, if you use it during the day or at night, it would still have that effect just like alpha hydroxy acids do. Right, you're still gonna be sensitive. Exactly, no yeah. exactly. You know what, fun fact, encapsulation, which I'm always talking about, is one of the reasons why you can use retinoids during the day. Well, there you go. So now we're bringing in some skincare chemistry. <laughs> True or false, you should mm. not use retinoids around your eyes or on your neck. So those of you who know me know that I have the most sensitive eyelids. Do you? Um, horrible. So anytime I put anything on my eyelids, I get really bad eyelid dermatitis. So I can't put retinoids on my eyelids because I have sensitive eyelids. If I could, I would in a heartbeat. It has so many benefits for the under eye area, wrinkles, dark circles, a lot of the issues people have with their under eye skin is gonna be very beneficial for. The problem is that this is really thin skin, it's got less oil glands, it doesn't have hair follicles, and so it's not able to regenerate itself as easy. And so you do have to be more gentle on the eyelid and on the neck, but that doesn't bar you from being able to use them. You just have to be thoughtful about the concentration and the amount that you're gonna use. People could technically use a more gentle kind of retinoid, maybe a retinol or an eye cream that's formulated with some kind of a retinol around their eyes, but then go full prescription and strength like tretinoin on their face, right? Exactly. And that's exactly what I tried to do, but was unsuccessful doing, was trying to using a lower concentration on my eyelids for my face, but it didn't work out for me. But for a lot of people, that is exactly what they do. And it's exactly what works for them. It could theoretically cause a little bit of dry eye because of the decreased oil production on your glands. So just be careful of that. If you notice you're using it on your eyelid skin, and you're getting dry eye, then it could be your retinoids. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, just pay attention. True or false, you should stop using retinoids if you get any kind of sensitivity or irritation. Hmm. So how this is like a dermatologist nightmare, right? Because this is like what you experience with your patients a lot, I'm sure. Yeah, so a lot of people will say I stopped using it because they started to flake a little bit. And I'm like, well, this is what we're expecting to happen. So there's like negative consequences of things that are unexpected and you should stop it. And then there's consequences that are expected and that means that the medication is working. Like for example, purging, like when your acne gets worse after starting a retinoid temporarily, that's sort of expected because it's bringing all those pimples to the surface. Whereas if you were to develop like an allergic reaction, that'd be like an unexpected thing. So it's so hard to know what you're personally experiencing. So if you have some type of sensitivity, you may need to stop it, but just expect that your skin is gonna have flaking when you start it for at least the first month. And so that shouldn't stop you from using it. True or false, prescription retinoids are better than over-the-counter retinoids. <sighs> this is a tough one. So, all right, prescription tretinoin acts immediately on the retinoic acid receptors and so it's automatically active. And then retinol, like we said, needs to be converted in order to be active. Now they did do a study that actually compared these two head to head and they actually had similar benefits with the retinol showing less irritation with it. I do think that tretinoin has more data than retinol does over the counter. And when you say retinol over the counter, it's like, who's retinol, right? right? That's the problem. Whereas we know tretinoin has the data behind it to say this tretinoin molecule is actually very, very effective. And so I would say like, if I was recommending to my family, which is most effective, I would probably say tretinoin has the better leg in this, but I think that retinol is a very close second. Mm -hmm. And especially for someone like me, right, who won't commit to the tretinoin because of the irritation. And I, I mean, if we're being honest, it's also because I just want to look really good and I don't want to go through a month of flaking all day long. Mm, fair enough. Yeah, so I guess then the question is like, what do you mean by better, right? Cause like better in what way? Because if you can't tolerate it, then it's not better. So the retinol is better for you. And so like, I think skincare is like more individualized than we give it credit. Like there's no routine that fits everybody perfectly or a particular product that fits everybody perfectly. And so like for you, retinol might be better. And then like for me, tretinol might be better. I like that. So it's kind of like right in the middle. It's not true or false. It's yeah, it sounds kind of like eh, whatever you tolerate. <laughs> True or false, you have to stop using retinoids every few months. Oh yeah, no, that's not true. Um, and I, I no. False. <laughs> that's a false. I, I know. I think you can continue to use it long term, no issues. Like you don't need to give your skin a break. That's like a common misconception that you need to give your skin like time to breathe. Now, if you're having an issue, then yeah, like you know, re like reconfigure. But if you're doing great on something, just like 
stay the course. We yeah. say like, use it forever and ever. Like that's what I tell my patients. Forever and ever. <laughs> True or false, retinoids cause depression. Yeah, this is like the great debate of the century. So uh, this is- Especially in your domain, on uh, the, yeah, on it's the like, TikTok. On the TikTok, yeah, this is my, my domain. <laughs> but even in the office, this is in my, in that domain really? also is a, is a topic of discussion. So topical retinol, I can probably say almost 100% no. Let's say 99% no, it's not gonna cause depression. Now, when we talk about where this rumor came from. It actually started a single TikTok that talked about topical treatments causing depression and that I can pretty much say categorically not true. But oral Accutane, which is a form of retinoid, does have some data to show that it could increase depression in a select group of patients. Now they've done huge studies on this actually showing that it probably doesn't overall cause that issue. And so they've actually done huge meta analysis looking at data from like 50 years. And they said that it probably increases the mood because your skin gets better and because of that you know, you're more confident. But there is probably a select group of people that do negatively react to it and have mood disturbances from it. And the psychiatrists and the dermatologists actually do argue about this because there are psychiatrists that believe it does really cause this problem and they're dermatologists who believe that let's just get you better skin. And so it really is up in the air, but I would say that this is something that I'm gonna, if you're seeing me and you're on Accutane, like I'm gonna talk to you every single visit, like how's your mood doing? If you have depression, I'm gonna work with your psychiatrist. And so we don't want it to be an issue, but for topicals, I wouldn't even worry about that. And I think it's also important to point out that before you get on Accutane, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you have to go through with that patient first. And for women, they have to even get on birth control, confirm that they're not pregnant. There's so many other things you have to check on first, right? Yeah, there's. Uh, it's highly regulated by the government through a system called iPledge. Every month you have to get labs done. Every month you have to confirm that you're on birth control. So it's very highly regulated. We're gonna ask you those questions to make sure you're not having any adverse reactions to it. And so it, it, this is like sort of not, I guess really this is like a discussion you need to have with your dermatologist, but uh, with the topical treatments you're finding over the counter, like I think overall it's gonna make your skin look better and you'll probably be less depressed or sad because your skin's better. I agree with that. And then this last one, I'm gonna read to you because this was a comment on one of my videos. Mm. And I thought, you know what? I, I don't actually know the answer to this one and I would love to get your take on it. So I'm gonna read it word for word. And it is, retinol dissolves the subcutaneous fat in your face, an awful aging side effect that seemingly no YouTubers want to share. <laughs> yeah, clearly this comes from like a place of like, they truly believe this. Like they've, someone told them this, right? So it's like not like whoever the commenter is, like not their like fault for like believing. So this it's came from somewhere. And right? probably someone, someone with authority, right? Told right. them this. And I don't know where particularly that literature comes from, but tra topical treatments are not gonna reach deep enough to affect your subcutaneous fat. So, you know, that's pretty deep below the, like you have the epidermis, then you have the dermis, and then below that you have the subcutaneous fat. Your topical treatments aren't really penetrating that deep, which is why we use things like filler and Botox to rejuvenate the face is because they get deeper um, into that like subcutaneous fat layer. Well, at least fillers do in order to like fill up that space. And so for, for retinoids, they're really more affecting your collagen layer and your dermis and your epidermis affecting the skin cells. And so I don't see it causing that side effect in really anybody. So I, I don't know where it came from, but yeah, that's uh, that's You're gonna false. go for a me, false. Me. <laughs> All right, well, this was super insightful, especially that last one. I'm so glad that we got to chat a little bit about it because I do see so many different comments about all types of ingredients, but retinoids really bring out some of the more interesting, I guess, myths that I've seen. Yeah, I agree. And I think everyone like wants better skin, but they don't want to like harm themselves, which is why I think like so many different like movements have started, you know, like chemical free and natural and clean. Like I think these come from a place of like, I want better skin, but I want to do it like in a healthy way. So I don't blame the people that want this because I want that too. Like I want that for my family. I want that for everybody. Right. But I, I think that when so, like when we talk about these skincare products available over the counter, most of them are very safe. And if you follow the instructions from your dermatologist and other people that are knowledgeable about these subjects, uh, they're gonna lead you in the right direction because they want you to have better skin too. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Shaw. Where can everybody find you on social media? So you can find me on Instagram, uh, Dr. Lee. You can find me on YouTube at Dr. Lee. And you can find me on TikTok at Derm Doctor. I love it. I'm also on Instagram at Susan Yara. We'll talk to you soon.